Ich schon. Ja, das ist sehr gut. Just like the outside we were talking about this is part two. I don't put the chlorophyll in there. I'm sorry, take a I'll see you in some. I mean just leave it. Let's leave it like that. Okay. Let me finish this real quick. Part two is gonna be short, of course. Okay. So we did put you know, so so the cast came up and we, we kept on, you know, we finished the, the piece up at the station. Now interestingly enough, because it's like it took so many so much time, we have all kinds of things here. Like um like for instance, our musicians, um, James Paul and Vince Williams, they were on saxophone. There's a part where they talk about communism, and Mr. Bloom and, and Cross Damon are talking like it's like a battle. So they had them battling the, in the whole. And when I do these things, I mic up the whole set. I, use, I basically use the different studios. It's like a, if you see a play, you know, you're watching a play, and a scene takes place in the, in the kitchen, right? And then the next scene takes place in the backyard, the next scene takes, takes place in the, the bedroom or something like that. The lights just come up. You see the whole set, but the lights come up and you focus there. Well, I did the same thing with microphones. If, if, if a scene was going to um, do a scene and say it was called a meat locker, or I guess it's at a C, um, you know, I just put the microphones up in there to see that. But then, all right, this is what I do. Let me show you. The engineers, for instance, for this fine production. Uh, where's my engineers? Hey, 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 hey. Engineers. What the hell? I don't have engineers. I'll get to them in a second. Uh, you know, publicity, we have phot uh, um, photography, uh, graphics, that was used from Rodney, like I said, uh, special assistants, um, herbology, mixing and listens, Cyrus Patrick, uh, recorders, Ed Haber and, um, and Steve Marshall, they're supposed to record this thing from the outside, uh, assistant to the director, Yusuf Lamont, Foley, Joseph Masuri, location engineer, John Fitz, oh, studio engineers, John Randolph, Yusuf Lamont, Darren McNeil. This may have been John's first thing that he did with us. Look, when I said like, like say like John Randolph, you know, Jay Smooth, he came. I was training him in the radio. Anyway, he just came to me when he was like 16. Anyway, but I just I just throw people in. Boom, sink or swim. <laughs> um, technical director, the best on earth, Jake Glance. My man, Jake, the best, the very best. I kid you not. Um, um, well, John Fitz, location engineer. That's, he was the John was the location engineer for down the New York. He also was the uh, chief engineer when we did the New York and Post Cafe live uh, once a month. Produced, adapted, and directed by Anthony Sloan for No More Radio. So we we finished there, and I'm telling you, uh, um, uh, let me just say this: the two, well, uh, cross. There's what we call. I call the cross voice that was the voice that the regular voice, and then there's like an inner voice. You know when when you're thinking you 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 or you hear yourself inside at a, at a different level than you hear yourself outside. So basically, I had two narrators, if you will, cross you're talking right, and then uh, Bernard White was the the inner voice, this real deep voice. Even when we was down at the at the uh, Poets Cafe, he was broadcasting from the station in his voice. You see, so anyway, it's quite a unique thing. So then what happened? Um, um, when it, um, uh, was it, uh, um, Pentagrass, uh, Kofi Pentagrass, his program was supposed to come on, I guess at 3 o'clock or something, whenever it was supposed to come on. And we was going over to his time, and he said, no, y'all keep on going, y'all keep on going. And this is powerful, this place was powerful, you know? Um, so when we ended with, his, maybe he had a half hour left on his program, so he just interviewed me and Bernard. And I'm telling you, because remember, you up, I mean, I'm direct, I'm... I'm after the interview, when we, when we left the station, I mean, I was like buzzing. It was like this is an incredible high. I mean, it's not even high. It's like a otherworldly thing, you know. This stuff was intense. They said, well, how come we don't know about it? How come it's not in the Guinness Book of World Records? Because we don't care about the Guinness Book of World Records. <laughs> we don't care about the, I guess they call it now the dominant culture. What do I care? The pe Every audio drama I've ever done, the people involved, They've been changed. Some people would save people's lives. I'm more interested in that than getting some sort of war. Say, hey, I'm the best in the world at that particular time. I do. I deal. I call myself a, 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 a cultural revolutionary. 
but actually I'm an evolutionary in everything, even culture. So if I've done it before, if you actually notice, notice my resume, everything is boom, 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 boom. Even to this day, I don't do audio drama anymore like, like that, but what I do is I use audio drama to affect whole communities. You see? I've trained other people. Like, uh, there's only, you know, there's only three uh, uh, official, <laughs> um, I call them uh, revolutionary audio dramas. They're, they're all in Cape Town, you know. I trained them. Uh, the cat is the, 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 the associate with me right now in, um, in Eastern Cape. Like, he's an amazing cat. He's amazing, you know what I mean? And so, it's like I've now passed on my thing. I've done, I've done the legacy. I've passed on what I'm supposed to pass on. And that's what's important to me. So, let me end there. I mean, I know. You know, it's like, uh, you know, this is part two is like really short as it should be. But I need to say this, I suppose, is there's this thing I keep on hearing. I, I can't, well, if there is such a thing as hate as hate, <laughs> then I hate the term, the phrase, the concept of empowerment. I can't stand it. Empowerment says that somebody has something and they're going to give you something. They're going to empower you. What happens, my technique, is I have to release you. I have to give you the situation, the vibration, the, the not even the inspiration, the situation, the vibration. I put in the situation that you have to release. Let's just take John Red one, I threw him as, as, an, as one of the engineers, right? Now, I didn't teach him what to do. He had to dig inside himself. We, we, sure, there's other people around us, so I made it safe to become, you see? The importance of the ADOS movement is this. Here's the way I like to put it. I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there in Cape Town, not Cape Town, I'm sitting there in the Eastern Cape, you know, in my little Limbete place. You know, just doing my regular thing, because remember, this channel is supposed to really, I started out just because I just want to archive things. And so I'm looking at things to, you know, I'm always checking things to, to comment on, you know, make the universal. And I had been following, first it was Iron Man because it was the funky academic, you know what I mean? I, I liked his business, I liked what he was saying. And then I noticed Yvette Cornell, when they held the Farrakhan thing and, and with, with Boyce's channel, I had been looking a little bit at Boyce, but, but no, I said, oh, she's interesting. And when she confronted those guys and, 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 and the man himself wouldn't come down and, talk, and, and, and engage her, I said, oh, they scared of this woman. They scared of this woman. And then there was some sort of conference in Chicago, where it was, and I saw Iron Man her running, walking together. The next thing I know, they're on the thing together, doing some stuff. Then the next thing I know, I I see her alone, you know? Oh, she really is on to herself, you know? And then she's on the phone with, you know, you know, with uh, and Antonio Moore. I'm going like, wow. Then when they, hit on ADOS. I won't get to the whole thing because this, this whole other thing, at the same time, I had this whole other thing trying to find out, what, I wanted a, a clan name. In fact, uh, I went to, I went to James, you know, uh, James, when James Moore, I said, we need a clan name. Uh, we went to this back and forth, back and forth. Maybe I'll put that link if I can find it. Well, now I know where it is, like, like that. But what happened, it struck me and it released me logically. Let me put it this way. This is gonna may offend some people when we use language. Up until the point that that Antonio and Yvette accurately named us, accurately named us. When I say accurately, accurately named us and our purpose. AD was the, the the North American descendants of chattel slavery is a purpose. It's not just a lineage. It's a purpose. You now you have to dig in yourself and find a marching orders for yourself. Okay. Up until that point, the only accurate description of not ourselves but our condition was nigger. No, not colored, not Negro, none of that. That's what was nigger. We were in a niggardly state, put in a niggardly state. So that is the most accurate. You know, what I said this before. One of my favorite films is Watch Stacks. So a, you'll figure out what it's watched. W-A-T-T-S-T-A-X. Look it up. 
great film, documentary really. Um, and Richard Pryor's in there, he tells a joke. He says, well, you know what, so he said, you know, when we came in here, they took them, they took the prince and the princesses and the, all the, you know, builders, they put up, they, we all came to, to, you know, they pulled us in America, and we were arguing, and then, as he said, and as, as you know, the Lord works in a mysterious way. So he said, one tribe, niggas. <laughs> I want you to think about it. forget the, the I'm into sound anyway, but just forget, you know, what you think the word means. Well, you know what the word means. And then that then that cause I think at one point if you if you if, if you was in a group and you threw the word, you know, in a mixed group of space, you threw the word nigga out there, oh that would just disrupt the meeting. Confusion, ah that's Prince. Confusion. People got then they go off on, on that word. Then what happened, you had this 60s and they still, they're doing whatever they're doing, you know. Um, then the 90s come and Tupac says, man, we're gonna, we're gonna change that meaning of that word. So he changed the meaning of the word, right? N-I-G-G-A, right? Never ignorant getting goals accomplished. Never ignorant getting goals accomplished. Very positive. Words the same, but we changed the meaning. Not we, he changed the meaning. Well, as you know, ignorant <laughs> people. Oh, gosh. There's a guy on YouTube because they, because everybody he called black people ignorance, right? They just forget Tupac's definition. You know, well, forget that. We gonna, well, we just want to say that word. And all the black people, the, um, so they, they say that word. Anyway, I'm sorry. One, one, one more thing. Um, the great comedian, uh, uh, Patrice O'Neill. He used the word as reparations. So what he did was, he would call everybody, anybody he wanted to a nigga, right? Then they, they what happened, but they couldn't say it back. If he wasn't a nigga, you couldn't say nothing back. That's how we use it. And when you really, and then there was this, um, if you could, there's a film called Smoking Aces. If you really watch that film, watch out for it. The black people in that figure, film say nigga. No white person says nigga in that film. It's a reparations word. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna get off on that. But then, here comes Yvette and Antonio. Or Antonio and Yvette, however you say it. In fact, this is good to say. And they, they not only describe the people, but they describe the conditions that the people were under and what will release us. So when I heard, when I heard, immediately something just snapped inside me. It's like, I, I just, I was completely released, completely released, and knew, as I released, I knew the mission. I knew the mission. My personal mission and the mission of my peoples, if you want to put it that way. But here's what's so wonderful about what I call the ADOS reality. The ADOS reality is projected is, 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 is we get our marching orders from a woman and a man co-equals and they are informed in their truths informed in their data by a woman and a man yes Professor Darity and his wife you get that the energy there right look at any other movement has had that started. It was never, I can't find it. Sure, there's women in that. You know, uh, the, uh, uh, the great Ella Josephine Baker, you know, and she's the one that got um, Martin Luther King in his place, you know? She's the one with, with SNCC and all the rest of that stuff. But the men, let's go to literature. These men ostracized. Zora Neale Hurston, she was correct. But it was never a movie, always. The men, the patriarchy, the men, the men, the men. And that means you have a male energy. That means that another male energy, if they're more powerful than you. This movement, this reality of A-D-O-S is so important. Is because we got this energy. We got this energy that nobody, no force on earth can stop. It, if you want to, it, it has been divined. It has been divined. 
which is why not only, not only won't it be stopped, but all who, who, who've been released will gather and they will stay in their own, they, we will win. But in our winning, what is going to happen? We're going to save the world. Listen to me, Claire, save the world. I mean, you got these people that they want to save the Democratic Party, they want to save this, that they want to oppose that. That's not what this is about. I'll give you a small example. Say for instance, we, we do the reparations. Remember, getting reparations. Well, isn't that, people say reparations. It's a debt due. We, they're going to pay the debt. How are they going to pay the debt? That's their problem. This is a debt due. Look at you. You got to sell some jewelry. Well, I don't know what you got to do. Let yeah, me get something they could do, right? What's plaguing our community? We got all these people in police force that got there when they're armored, they're militaried up. Well, Eh, got to take away all that military there. Uh, melt it down and plowshares where well, mixing railroad tracks, whatever have you. So all of the police forces in the entire United States gets demilitarized. Their, 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 their weapons, their military gets taken away. You become bobbies. You become bobbies. I'm going to go any further. There's a whole lot of other things. But it's not, I'm not, that's not my, I don't have to, Figure out how you're gonna pay the pay the debt. You got to pay the debt. What's the figure? Who cares about the figure? He's gotta pay the debt. You want me to give you a figure? I've given you a figure before. Thirty trillion U.S. dollars. Oh, they've they've estimated at twelve trillion or whatever it's trillion. Okay. So you figure it out. Let me figure it out for you. Let's say half of 30 trillion is what? 15 trillion? Okay. 15 trillion dollars, you all think about that. I want a separate 15 trillion in cryptocurrency. Why? Because as soon as this has been happening, as soon as that, that trillion is, 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 is announced, they will do something to wipe that out. And that's not, that, that, that US dollar trillion is not based on anything but faith, military power, whatever you want to do. Crypto is based on mathematics, the universal. And you just match it. Go to the cryptocurrency community because they need they need because they need the publicity. And say, hey, you know, you got to you know, set aside a thing. Every, you know, you match everything that the U.S. government has to match in crypto. You know, talk to the crypto community. That brings them together, too. I don't care how y'all do it. Every crypto you got to put into something, I don't know. And nobody touches that because y'all don't have faith in it. I'm not, I'm, I'm not talking to it. But you, people don't have faith in it. That's, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. And so when we finally need it, we have a, we have a, back, a backup cryptocurrency. Which is 15 trillion, which you want anyway. And you have the real, the real, the, the US dollar, 15 trillion. Ta da! Problem solved. You got it? You understand? This is bigger than anybody. There's no, no one person, no one brain is going to figure this out. No one brain is going to figure this out. No two brains are going to figure this out. But I will tell you this, the brains that figured it out, they all have to have this male-female energy because that's what we need. And that's what's so important about this movement. That's what's so important about this movement. That we have male-female energy all along the line. That's what we have to keep on du 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 uh, duplicating. Remember I said talk to old people? Well, uh, old people, a young person should have to approach this. And, and old people, old people, uh, Boom, whatever you call. It. We can, we as an in, as an elder, we can only give advice. You don't have to. Yvette and Antonio do not have to take the advice. They've taken the data from from Sandy Darity. He's he's got to be he, he's he's a boomer or whatever. He's an elder. So these elders, if, if, let me tell you something. One thing that's really been upsetting me. These. So-called old, uh, uh, black boy, whatever, Professor Black, whatever it is, you know, he says there's olders and there's elders, right? If you're if you're trying to jump in front of a movement, if you're trying to get your past glory, if you're trying to do, if you're still talking polemics, I'm, I'm a revolutionary, been a revolutionary, I got Well, guess what? You're an older. Why? Because you have failed, and you need to move out the way. All you can do is give advice, and if they take your advice, then they take your advice. If they don't. Go back to fanning yourself on the thing. 
take care of your, your grandchildren. Find some grandchildren to take care of. You know, that's what needs to be done. I have faith in the next, look, I have a 28 year old right now, when I say 20, I mean, I've trained him in, in, in audio, and, and, and he's, a, he's a community developer, he's using audio drama, blah, 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 blah. He came to me when he was 25. It's a natural, organ, or, organic thing, right? At about 28, after three years, he just, I don't have to say anything to him. He hang out, he asks me some questions, I ask him some questions, he take my advice and not take my advice. If you haven't duplicated yourself, you're elder, you haven't duplicated, if you're older, if you haven't duplicated yourself, or at least so, the, the, put a situation where your, your, your values, whatever, can, can develop, can grow, then you have failed, not only your lineage, you have failed your life. Your piddling little existence here in the belly of the beast where you did no fighting at all. No, you didn't, you had no success at all. I'm, I'm looking for, basically, the 21-year-olds. Is a group in that male-female energy. That's it. The story of a um, an ADOS and his journey through communications and radio. I have a lot of radio children. I have a lot of radio grandchildren. Find yours in whatever field you are. Find them. Support them. Give them all the support you can possibly give them. Because in the final analysis, in the words of Mangalisa Robert Sabuk, you read this upside down, we are I can't read upside down. They say foremost. Well, well, we are fighting for the noblest cause. We are fighting for the noblest cause on earth. The liberation of mankind. Mangalisa Robert Sabuque said, Africa is about humanity. I agree. If you're not into humanity, there should be a blueprint that says go back to your caves. Get off the continent. In the United States of North America, I'll fight, right? If you're not going to help ADOS, go back to your cave. Go back to what you've been doing. Because, you know, you understand what I'm saying. I being me, T, from the Pattersons, taking the change to bed, letting you know what I only suspect. From ADES, of the A-D-O-S, North American Descendants of Chattel Slavery.